y'all. Hush, hush. Welcome back to Turned Out with T.S. Madison on Fox Soul. When you first met my next guest, she was in the center of one of TV's most infamous love triangles. But these days, she's grown past the drama and has even sacrificed her claim to fame to keep it that way. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Love & Hip Hop's Mimi Faust. So, Mimi, you're turning 50. I am 50. Oh, you, you've just turned 50. I just turned 50. That is a huge milestone. So, what are you taking into this new chapter, and what are you leaving behind? I'm leaving behind all BS, mm. and I'm taking into this new chapter everything that is good, great, amazing. Um, my piece is priceless, and that's what I want to do moving forward. I have, I have anything negative, that's what I'm leaving behind. Girl, I'm 44, so that's six years for me. And I'm still going to be engaged in a little bit of mess because I like a little bit of mess. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like a little mess, but, you know, I ain't going to, you know, I'm going to leave some of it in my 44. But, you know, 50, I'm done with it, too. Listen, I, I'm in such a happy place in my life right now. I went to therapy, mm -hmm. and that's what got me together. Therapy? What? So what did you do in therapy? Like, what happened? Us as, as black people think ter therapy is so taboo. Therapy is necessary. Mm. Therapy is, therapy turned my life around. Because I honestly, I was proposed to in 2020 and I wasn't ready. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because we, we, we jumping all, all the way ahead. Now, you're engaged, so I want to say congratulations. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Put that rock, let them folks see the rock out there. Godly, oh my God. So have you guys set a date? We haven't, we're working on everything. This literally just happened last week. I did see it on social media. It's a beautiful thing and I, I wasn't expecting this. I'm not like a very materialistic type girl. And then when I got it, I was, I was blown away. Like, damn. Girl. <laughs> So this is the second time you and Ty have been engaged. Yes. Girl, what happened the first time? I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready, like honestly. I was scared, I was terrified. I was like, I said yes in the moment because there were cameras and stuff around. And two days later I was like, ah, you know, I freaked out. But why are you so afraid of- uh, Commitment. Commitment, yes. It's my past. Uh, it's the traumas that you... Yes. We all know that you've had a very open relationship on television. Yes. And so I, I would, it wouldn't be right if I didn't ask you one question about it. I won't say any names. I'm an open book. Say it. So, so were you traumatized by the relationship that you and Stevie had? Very much so. Very much so. Um, Stevie was probably my biggest lesson in life. My biggest life lesson, he probably was that. So the greatest gift that came from you and Stevie's, Stevie's relationship was your baby. Absolutely. But you don't fool with him. I fool with him because, you know, I see the daddy. But, like, fool with him, fool with him, like, it's, it's tough because I don't trust him. I don't believe him. I don't believe what he says because I've been lied to and disrespected so, for so long. So it's hard for me to trust and believe anything that comes out of his mouth, anything that he says, anything. So right now, today, I'm just now starting to learn, because of therapy, mm -hmm. to trust him and what he says. So when you saw your therapist, you sat down in front of your therapist and you said, I'm Mimi Fast and I used to date Stevie J. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've watched Love and Hip Hop, honey, you've seen the things that this man has taken me through. It was way more than that. I, I had to start from six years old. Oh. That's where my therapy started. At six. Six is when my trauma started. So, six years old, you, you went back to that trauma. Yes. And you, you, you're talking it out with your therapist, and then you get all the way up here to the, to the Stevie thing or whatever, yes. and then she says, well, you know, you got to let it go. Was it hard for you to let go? Yes. I've been holding on to this my whole life. It was very hard for me to let go. This is, this, these are the reasons why I, my relationships always failed. This is the reasons why, you know, when, I, when someone did honestly and genuinely love me, I was terrified to commit because of my past and my traumas. So 
it was tough. Every time a woman comes here and she talks to me about there, because Tamar was here uh, last week and mm -hmm. she was talking about, uh, you know, her dealings with therapy and how it's so necessary for, you know, us African-American people to really deal with our traumas and stuff like that. Um, and I admitted to her, I said, girl, you know, I think that that's why a lot of my relationships and business ships and things have been uh, in such turmoil because there's so many things that I haven't touched on mm -hmm. and, and, and really dealt with, you know, in, in my past that, have, that, have, that has traumatized me that I'm afraid to go forth and talk to somebody about and because and, I don't want them judging me. But then I have to get in the space in my mind like, girl, in order for you to really move forward, you, you do have to let your guard down and be very open and honest with what you've been through. You have to. If you don't, you're always going to be stuck in that place. And I was scared for a long time because of the things that I've done and went through, and I didn't want to do it either. But I got to a place where I was so broken down, I just didn't have a choice. I was in a bad place. And in order for me, and, and, I, and I still have a child that I have to raise. I still got to be a good mom to her. I still got to give her the tools and the gems that she needs because I'm not always going to be here. I had her later in life. I got to give her these gems now. Right. So she's equipped to deal because this world is nasty. It is very nasty. Very nasty. And I learned that the world was very nasty. Very, very, very early. Very nasty. I'm very happy that you, you know, you're in this space and you, you found a, a person that, that loves you and, and you said yes to. But I want to know <laughs> a woman. This is totally different for you. What what is it what is this like like you know being being cuz I'm I'm a, a heterosexual transsexual. Yeah, add it up girl. It's add it up. <laughs> um okay. You know <laughs> meaning that I've only been attracted to, you know, men like my the entirety of my life. I've never had a bisexual moment where I've been, you know, open to I've had ex an, almost an experience that I'll elaborate about later on somewhere. <laughs> but I've never been attracted to anything other than a man. And so, when did, were you always bisexual? No. I dealt with men my entire life up until about nine years ago. My entire life. Was never attracted to women, never anything like that. So, so, so let's fast forward here. Can we expect like a wedding special on TV? I don't really even care about TV, but we're gonna have a, a wedding. Whether it's gonna be on TV or not is, I don't even care about that. We're gonna, ha we're gonna have our toes in somebody's sand somewhere. It's a destination wedding. We know that, we don't know where yet, but yes ma'am. So how has this relationship uh, changed your relationship with the Love & Hip Hop franchise? It's different because, you know, they're used to seeing what they're used to seeing. So then when I popped up with a female, they were like, what? You know, everybody was, oh, my God. And you know, it was different. It was tough. Can I be honest? Yes. At first, I didn't think it was real. I thought it was I thought it was for, for TV. TV. I did. I'm being, for, as a consumer, I thought it was. I was like, girl, she doing that for the ratings for and all this stuff, for a storyline. But this is real. Like, I see that it's real because the way you light up when you talk about Ty and that when you when you show that rock and <laughs> the way that you dismiss Nico and Stevie. All, oh, look, look, look. You see? Look how the, look how the, the whole the whole aura just changed. The way it was just very just like, girl, I ain't got nothing to do with any of that. And I love this for you, Mimi. I do. Like maybe one day, maybe one day I can absorb some of this, and I might need to have a same-sex relationship. <laughs> Wait a minute, I already do. <laughs> so, do you have any new projects coming up? I do. Uh, my life coach and I are working on a project called Peace is Priceless, and we're going to do podcasts, and we're going to every week um, or podcast will be a different topic or subject regarding anything that brings people peace in their life. Financial peace, mm. um, let's say it's uh, relationships, anything that you might have, weight gain, loss, whatever it might be. And then at the end of it, we're gonna have an expert that deals with that particular subject for the callers to get help on whatever they need for the particular thing that we are speaking about 
that week. Oh, where do I sign up for that? I need that, girl. <laughs> Peace is priceless and there's nothing out there like it. We're going to touch on every aspect you can think of. Oh, I'm ready for that, and child. Gonna, and going to help whoever is tuning in with whatever situation it is, if they want it. Okay, all right. Well, listen, when we come back, we're going to get down in my DMs, honey. Don't you go anywhere, because this is going to get hot. Welcome back, welcome back to Turned Out with T.S. Madison on Fox Soul. We are here with my girl Mimi Faust, honey. Mimi, thank you so much for being here. Like, I learned so much about you in that little short period of time. But I don't let everybody get down in my DMs, girl. Okay. But, you know, since you got this love and light, I want you to help me unpack what's going on in my DMs. Because I get all kinds of messages from all kinds of strangers and men and women and lentil men. You know, the things in between. And I want you to help me unpack that. Okay. So what we're about to do, ladies and gentlemen, is get down in the DMs. Yeah. All right, here's the first DM. What's going on, Madison? I'm glad to see you're taking DMs because I have a situation that I haven't been able to talk with others about. I'm a 28-year-old woman living in Biloxi where I teach first grade. After class some days, I visit this bar, like Miss Funky Dineva says, where the Honda cars be. Since going, I've met another friend and we've always had a great time. For about a month now, we've been meeting up and spending more time together. I've slowly started to develop feelings for them, but the only problem is she's a woman as well. I've never had this type of experience before. What should I do? Explore it. So your first time when you developed feelings to see what you just went right on in? And no, I didn't. I was very skeptical. I was. I was skeptical. But the more I hung around my gay friends and the more we had a good time, it just, I just kind of like eased my way into the situation. <laughs> For lack of a better term, eased. Eased. Ooh. <laughs> that part. How was it your first time? It was good. <laughs> So we tell this person out there in the DM, honey, don't hold back. Get down there, honey, and do the damn thing. If you have feelings and emotions for this person, go ahead on and give it a try. Hell, don't knock it until you try. All right. See, try it. If it don't work for you, then leave it alone. Or try time. it again, you know? It, you know, it's okay. Right? Just try. If at first you don't succeed, ooh, dust your box off and try again. <laughs> <laughs> I dust the box off. Dust the box off. All right, let's okay, go to the right. next DM. Okay. You got your own show. You cute now, huh? Girl, I need your help. Me and my man have been together for about three years, and we are very happy. We have a very open and connected relationship with no judgment on either part. Hmm. Both of us are freaky. As so oftentimes we film our encounters. Now, because we're saving for a home, we're considering taking these videos and starting an OnlyFans. The only issue is we disagree on whether we should show our faces or not. What do you think, sis? Well, wait a minute now. You asked me this when I was the queen of El Noheem and all the things in between, girl. Okay. All right. Okay. I want to hear what you have to say. I'm a, I'm a retired stripper. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's not my ministry anymore. However, if this is something that they're doing to make money, mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't be opposed to that. And, but this is something that it seems like that they, that they want to do. Wait a minute, Mimi. Hold on. Oh, God. You've had some experience in the video vixen situation. I have. For me, big mistake. Oh. Big, big, big mistake. Huge. Oh. On every level. For me. Boy, it, it was huge. I did see it. <laughs> huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, for, for me, everybody's different. If that's what they're into and they, they like voyeurism and all that, I mean, it, it, and they both agree on it, sure, it, 
See what it do for you. For me. Now, girl, you know you had ran you you and someone else had ran the stock up over there at Bed Bath and Beyond, honey. They couldn't keep a shower rod in the store nowhere in the United States of America. Shower rods were selling out all over the country. Can I can I sidebar real quick? Yes. So let me tell you how that even came. The sh whole shower rod thing came about after. Can I just get into? It? Go ahead. This is what we do down in the DMs. We get into. I'm gonna get into it. So. He shopped, he said to me, can I shop this around? Initially, he came to me and said, can, I, can he tape us? You know, what we do is art, it's like art, eh. can I tape us? I was like, okay, I've never done that. I never even taped myself with Stevie, who I had been with for years, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, cool. So then he said, can I, you know, can I just see what it do, whatever, it was so good, da, da, da. The moment I, said yes and i didn't know what that entailed was the worst moment of my life because when i said yes you can see what it do with the tape he went ham i mean it was on underground sites it, it was, was it was everywhere i heard you guys got a a, a, a offer from uh pornhub for a million dollars it was everywhere okay we ended up Vivid ended up giving me a call a few days later mm -hmm. and saying, um, you might want to come have a meeting with us. So I'm like, I don't know. Mind you, I'm clueless to this. I don't know what's going on. I don't know anything about this world. I just told my boyfriend, yes, see what you can do. Big mistake. Once... I got to the office with the Vivid people. They were like, this tape is everywhere. It's everywhere. He has shopped it everywhere. He said, it's on. He said, we can regulate this tape if you, if you would like us to. If not, this tape will just be out there and you get nothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or you can sign with us and at least get paid for it. Okay. So I'm sitting there and I had to make a decision in that moment. Do I want to let this be out there for, for nothing? For free, right. For free, because he done put it out there. Or do I want it to be out there and get compensated for it? Okay. So I agreed to sign with them. Mm. They, after they explained that they've been in business for all these years, they're number one. You had never known about Vivid? Never. Clueless. I don't even watch porn. I don't even watch porn. Let's start there. Okay. I mean, hit with all types of daggers and stuff like that at one time. And I'm like, I'm overwhelmed trying to make a decision about my life in this moment about a serious decision. I said, OK, what I didn't know was in that office when I said, OK, and signed with them, they said, well, we don't have our money shot. They put us in an Uber and sent us to a hotel to get the money shot. I don't know if anyone has ever seen the tape, but there's where you can tell it's just me and him in some, some real home, and then there's one that looks real, not like a home tape. They sent a camera person in to get the money shot, okay? So after, so I can't, I don't, I can't perform, I, I've never done this on camera, so it just, it was terrible. So after hours and hours of trying to get the money shot, I'm like, I need to take a shower. I'm high, this is too much of the higher. Uh -huh. Like, I went to go take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> As I went in there, he came in after me and the shower scene happened and the camera person followed us in the bathroom. That's where the whole shower off thing came from. So the shower the shower rod scene was just out the blue. Out the blue, because I was over it and done. At that point, I was like, I don't care what y'all got. I'm, I'm done with this. I'm over it. I'm going to just, I'm done. So the burning question for me in this situation is, did you get the money, the shot? Absolutely. Huh? I get, I'm going to get paid for the rest of my life. Hi, y'all about shot time. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> rest of my life. <laughs> Listen. Anybody that's in a hotel that pulls it up, anybody that's that can 
whenever you pull it up and you watch it, unless it's on a little snippet of... On a tube side? Yeah. I get paid. Oh, I know exactly how that works. This is why I make residual coins for the rest of my life as well. Then I say, when I die, when I'm dead and gone, if somebody want to watch it... it Your daughter get it. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Hello. That's how it works for a smart individual. Hello. I've always been a smart lady. Mm -hmm. And so being that we're both smart ladies, we'll just tell this couple out here, honey, do what you need to do, but make sure you make your money off of it, honey. And make sure that it's lucrative now and after you're gone. That part. Yeah. All right, let's go to this last DM. Hey, Madison, I need your help. I'm a professional chef, and I've been working for one family for the last five years. During this time, I've built an amazing relationship with the kids and the wife. But I've also grown closer to the husband as well, spending intimate time learning his likes and dislikes and making his food has pushed us into more intimate relationship. Any small moment that we can grab just between us, we act on it. No. But I'm getting tired of those small moments and I would like more. What should I do? Absolutely not. If you are a professional individual and you are working for the family and you have a relationship with this family, wife, kids, sever your ties with this husband. Do not move forward. Absolutely stop. Stop it now. What? Listen, I've told people on, on many, many occasions, the karmatic energy that's going to come for him, you don't want to have anything to do with that. Hello. Whatever karma comes around, I told people last year, I'm not having nobody's husband, knowingly. All that stuff is karma. Yes. And when it comes back. It's terrible. Oh, and I don't want to be, let the walls fall out on him and honey, let me be safe. More so than that, you're going to lose your job if this gets out. You're going to have a bad reputation if this gets out. It's just bad across the board. It's bad across the board. Yeah. He's not leaving his wife for you. Ever. Chef. Oh. He's not leaving his wife or kids for you. Maid. <laughs> Just stop now. Stop now. Find your own man and, and uh, exit stage left with this situation. Oh, yes. I see you looking. Don't you go nowhere. We'll be right back. <laughs>